ever wondered what God looked like? Would you believe me if I told you I can show you the face of God? Welcome to Teresa's Tips for Transcendence. Today's topic is Forget Everything, You Are God. I'm Teresa Schley Lombardi, author of Penelope and the Divine, a fictional personal narrative about a sensual woman born with special powers and her journey through the world of erotic dance and towards spiritual transcendence. So things are a little difficult in my corner of the world right now. And I've been reading a book called The Vortex by Abraham Hicks. It's on the law of attraction and relationships. And what I realized after reading it is uh, I've been kind of um, lying a little bit. Maybe not lying per se, but I have been dumbing down my message and I have been walking my talk. In the spiritual community, we talk a lot about spirit. Spirit said this, spirit said that, I'm gonna talk to spirit, I'm gonna ask spirit, blah, blah, blah. It's easier to talk about spirit because it's easier to say that than, the t than to speak the truth is there is no spirit because there's only you if you want to see the face of God go to a mirror and gaze into your own reflection I believe that I create my own universe which means I'm God but what I've been doing is just out of sheer habit from a religious from a Catholic upbringing I've been doing a lot of pleading with my prayers please 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 assuming acting like there's someone out there and the truth is there isn't anyone out there because I'm source Abraham Hicks uses the word source in place of the word God and um, I like that word because it gets me out of my old paradigm thinking and into kind of helps me do a 180 into new paradigm thinking generally I don't like labels but because we have forgotten how to communicate telepathically language is necessary language is language is just a series of labels um, for emotions and sensations. So the label that I'm choosing for the concept that I'm God is the word source. Now I didn't make this concept up and neither did Abraham Hicks. If you go far enough back into all of the ancient teachings they all talk about the same thing. The problem is the message has been altered over the centuries. One of the reasons this message has been altered over the centuries is because life on this planet can be difficult and so it's hard to accept that you're source and you're fully responsible for your conditions. When I think of source, I think of this giant nebula hanging in space, hanging in galactic space. It's that huge, it's that profound, and it, all of that is what exists inside of each and every one of my cells, and it's in your cells too. So how in God's name do you drop a lifetime of programming and accept that you are source when you go out in the world and someone cuts you off in traffic or your girlfriend breaks up with you or um, you look around at your life and you know, you're in a crazy situation that you don't want to be in? Who wants to believe that they're the God that created a bunch of crap in their life? Frankly, I think this is why we invented priests. Because it's much easier to look to a middleman to fix our problem than to accept and commit to doing the processes involved to get us to where we want to be. As I always say, transcendence is messy. So here's the deal. When we're not operating in the world as if we are a source, we're out of alignment and out of integrity with ourselves. When this happens, our inner being is always crying out to us and, and showing us signs and signposts to let us know that we've gotten off track. But if we don't know how to listen, then we're ignoring these signs and we're sort of bumbling along through life. So when that happens, sometimes we look around and say, how did I get here? And we got here where we don't want to be by being inauthentic. Or it's not paying attention to our inner guidance system. So if you're where you don't want to be, just know that every step that you took to get there is showing you a way out. You know what it looks like to be off of your authentic path. So take a look around, make different choices, get conscious of where you are, acknowledge how you got there and make different choices and change your behaviors, even in small steps. What I love best about Abraham Hicks is they say there are only two emotions. One feels good and one feels bad. You're meant to be in a state of well-being. So follow the good feelings and that will lead you where you need to go. So we're not taught that it's okay to feel good. We're not taught that it's okay to make feeling good a priority. We're certainly not taught to believe that pleasure is important. But the truth is, pleasure is crucial to each and every facet of our lives. Pleasure is crucial. The building block of pleasure is a good feeling. What you need to do is, if you're somewhere you don't want to be, commit to living in a pleasurable way. Do the next thing that feels good, and then the next, and the next, and that will get you where you need to go. 
In order to get out of my current difficult situation, I've committed to making pleasure a huge priority. And what's happened since then is my life has skyrocketed into this whole new dimension. I've made a commitment to make my life a continuously unfolding red carpet of bliss, and that is going to get me where I need to go. I can do this. I am God. I am Source. What can you do? So my tip for today is to know that you are God. Take a look around at your life. Get conscious. Be brave. And see the areas where you're not feeling good. And take the next pleasurable step towards feeling good. And that will get you back into your alignment with your inner being and towards living an authentic life. When you do that, you can up-level yourself and move towards transcendence. Thank you for the opportunity to share this information with you. If it's before June 28, 2010, I'm still in the running for round two of the next top spiritual author competition, and that means I need your vote. So there's going to be some information at the end of this video where you can go and click on a link and vote for me, and I deeply appreciate your vote. Normally what I would say is namaste, I salute the divinity in you, but I'm going to change my message. So as all of Penelope's teachers say in my novel, Namaste. I salute the divinity that is you. Hello.